Hello, everyone. It has been a minute since I got a chance to see all of you wonderful people, all of you smiling faces out there. My name is Eric Coffey. I'm the host of the Gut Prime Giants podcast. For those of you who don't know me, and uh, we're doing something a little different here. We're streaming on a Sunday evening. Actually, uh, when I look at my statistics, it says that Sunday evenings are the best time for when my subscribers are online. So uh, first, I'd like to give a shout out to, uh, I see Maria's on here, so go Florida State. You know, they're kicking butt right now. And then my Dolphins won tonight. So i um, got to give a shout out to my Dolphins. But yeah, I've been traveling for a couple weeks. Um, and so I had a chance to, since our conference in October, I mean, I've been on the road like crazy. Uh, and so it's interesting that I get to come back and I get to spread all the great stuff that's happening out here and then share it with you guys. So uh, welcome. I see there's 27 people already logged in. We're looking forward to having a big night tonight. I'm probably going to go for about an hour and a half. Uh, so don't worry. This episode will be live if you get a chance, if you miss it. Uh, but uh, I'm so happy that everyone's here. Look, I've got my man Mo in the picture. I see Jerome Hurd. I see some familiar faces out there. So this is great. Uh, we keep spreading the news, spreading the goodness, uh, taking, sharing all the information that I go out here and I learn, I discover, and bringing it back to you guys. So welcome, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, fun day to everyone. And thank you for your time and being here with us today. So uh, how's everyone doing out there? How's everyone? What's going on, Mandua? Uh, prayers to you, my good sirs. Uh, I know that you've been faced with some trying times, so good prayers to you. Trevor, congratulations for becoming a member and joining. Good stuff. Uh, we're going to do some housekeeping, as always, first before we get started. Uh, Colin, welcome. Who else we got here? Do me a favor. Uh, look, my man Biggie said, Federal Help Center is really, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Where did it go? Where did it go? My man Mo says, keep teaching people. Good stuff. And then someone says Federal Help Center is really awesome. And so for those of you who do not know what Federal Help Center is, before we go, uh, if you don't make it till the end, I'll drop it in the chat real quick. Head over to federalhelpcenter.com. It's our free platform. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me move my other face. All right. So if you don't know already, head over to federalhelpcenter.com. I'm going to drop it in the chat. And uh, it's free to join. All right, it's free for you to join, and we teach sessions throughout the week. So we've got a, it's our membership platform where we curate live trainings each and every week. So if you have not visited Federal Help Center, please make sure you do that today. It's cost you nothing, right? So our goal with Federal Help Center is to really uh, start to be able to talk directly to our audience. Unfortunately, on YouTube, we don't get a chance to interact with folks outside of the live videos. So on federalhelpcenter.com, we get a chance to talk to you, meet with you. People ask questions, as you can see here in the chat. Uh, we've got probably about 1,400 members right now, so you'll be able to uh, enter there. Also, we have our free beginner's course inside of Federal Help Center as well, and all of our programming. So you'll meet all of our coaches inside of Federal Help Center. You'll get a chance to actually engage with other students inside of Federal Help Center, and then you will also... Uh, get a chance if you want to go into some of our structured trainings as well you'll be able to do that so uh thank you for talking about federal help center but i definitely want to share that with folks out here who may not be aware of uh, what federal help center is so uh thank you again uh 46 people watching let's hit the like buttons everyone and uh as maria stated early as always when we first introduce ourselves we want to tell you who you are right so let's let's talk about who you are Tell me where you're from and what is it that you do. So again, if your name doesn't say who you are, uh, definitely put it up there. And so tell me what city you're from. But before you do that, hit the like button. 47 people watching. There should be at least 45 likes. So uh, Colin, by the way, if you see here below, Colin is the executive director for Federal Help Center. So he's in charge. If you have any questions for us, right? This is the, that's the best place to ask those questions. So if you've got any questions for us, Federal Help Center is the best place to ask those questions. But like I said, right now, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves. Tell me who you are. Tell me what you do. Tell me the city that you're from. All right. 
Look, Colin says, good, working on Source of Salt on Sunday. Good stuff. <laughs> My man Mo says, birds are economic collapse and world free. We're doing pretty good. My Mo's always got a good spirit. All right. So 53 people watching. Let's hit the like button before we get started on today's message. We're going to talk about you can't cheat the game. And that's actually a theme that I picked up um, recently from uh, some videos I was watching. So go ahead and drop that in there real quick. Let me know who you are. Tell me what you do so we can, um, you know, we can find out a little about each other. And then as we're going through our, our lessons today, we can talk to that. So go ahead, drop that in the chat. Uh, Maria, why don't you kick it off? Colin, show them how to do it. For people who may not know, be new to our channel. How many people are new to our channel and have never, uh, it's our first time joining a live session? Raise your hand. If you're new to the channel, it's your first time joining a live session, you know, go ahead and put a, a, a raise your hand inside of the chat. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see what we got going on here. What do we have? Let's see. All right, let's see. All right. <laughs> Ryan said, help me not to be poor, Eric. What's going on, Ryan? How are you, sir? Let's see. What do we got? All right, uh, Country Notary says, thanks for live. This is Country Notary, Southeast Texas. Love your channel, dropping knowledge. Welcome, Country Notary, to our show today. My man Jerome Hurd already said Jerome Hurd, state LLC, HVAC experts in Atlanta area. Nice. Um, by the way, uh, so so this is a good example right here. So Jerome, uh, we actually had um, one of our students message Marie and I recently, and they picked up four uh, HVAC contracts in Atlanta uh, in excess of $22 million. Um, so may want to uh, talk to them about what they're doing and the products they're working on. All right. Oh, we got Greenster. What's going on, Greenster in the building? So for all of you who don't know, Greenster is one of our sponsors at our event in October. What's going on, Greenster? All right. What else? Karen, uh, Chicago, loan officer with a credit union. Welcome down to earth. Welcome, Manny Facet, Faceted Jewels. All right, we got NOSA, Summit Group for our industrial facilities, supplies, who else? New to the group, Terrapin Government Solutions based in Severn, Maryland. First live session, nice, thank you, Patricia, welcome. Welcome, Blue Label, welcome. All right, Maria does construction, is currently in Georgia, remodels. And most importantly, it's the GovCon giant. Who else we got? PhD data science, looking to grow my incredible new business. Good stuff. Tour in Texas, janitorial services, mainly commercial. Wayne from Atlanta, on of the Calypsus. And my first live welcome. All right. Greenster forever. They launched Black Friday. Love it. Good stuff. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, so let's have a conversation about um, some of my experiences over the last uh, few weeks of traveling. And uh, it you know, brings me to the conversation I want to have today is uh, essentially uh, you can't cheat the game. And so I want to, I had a chance this uh, past week, I actually literally the last couple of days, I just left an event. Um, let me pull it up for you guys out there real quick. And we'll take you through a little timeline and then we'll have a conversation with folks out here. I, I, but I literally, I was at an event that I was invited to by my good friend, Patrick Cohen. And um, I literally, I was with a couple people that, and I'll, I'll pull up on stage real quick. Hold on. So, doo -doo, 
Not this picture. Give me one second. All right, there we go. So um, I was at this event, and I had a chance to meet these two women. Let me pull it up big so you guys can see it. So I was at this event recently, and I um, it's called Culture Shift Miami, Culture Shift Labs. And so I was at this event, and uh, Culture Shift Lab Miami, for those of you who do not know, is an event um, where Andrea Hoffman is the founder. And so what she does is she gets together in a room, uh, black and brown owners of equity firms, so uh, venture capital, private equity. And then she puts in the room investors, entrepreneurs, and uh, people that have solutions. So uh, startups and tech companies, uh, if you've got a product you want to sell or take to market, she puts you in a room with investors. And then also on top of that, family funds. So we've got a whole room full of really smart people uh, and successful people, right? And uh, this, she does these events. In fact, let me pull it up so you can see. She does these events in different places. She does them in New York, London. Uh, this happened to be in Miami. She got like New York, Miami, and London, and then Silicon Valley. Those, so those are the main places where she does these events at. Uh, and again, if you want to look it up, I'll put this up on the screen for you guys to share. So I just left the uh, Miami event, and I was there last year. And for those of you, if you can't see what's on my screen, right, last year, uh, this is Fred Royal from J.P. Morgan, and then Jessica Alba uh, for her new company she started. And then this year, we had Alex Rodriguez speak. Um, and so for those of you who don't know, famous baseball player. Maybe you know him from uh, dating Jennifer Lopez. Um, so Alex Rodriguez spoke at this past event. And it's interesting because what I did not know about Alex Rodriguez was that, and many people probably don't know this, but he actually has accumulated over 20,000 real estate units, doors, and over $5 billion in real estate. 20,000 doors and $5 billion in real estate. And so he tells the story um, at this event. This literally was Friday night, so it was two days ago. He tells the story about buying his first duplex in Miami, right? And then his second duplex. And then he bought a quadplex. And then he just started buying doors. And so it's interesting because most of us know him for his baseball prowess for celebrity uh you know people he's dating and things like that but we don't know him for the things that he did to build up his wealth outside of baseball right because that story is never or rarely ever told and so it's fascinating because when we go to events like this right like culture shift and we get a chance to be in the room with these kind of people and oftentimes we have said this time and time again right got to be in the room. My man Travis Mack says that you got to be in the room. You got to be in the room. You got to be in the room, right? Um, and so what happened was we happened to be there. I didn't personally uh, go up and meet A-Rod, but I got a chance to take from his story a lot of lessons that I feel like we can apply to all of us out here, right? Uh, because he's not where he's at today uh, because of the baseball money, right? It's because he took and sacrificed, right? And invested his money for the long term. So he was able to take the money that he made and reinvest it and sacrifice instead of doing like so many other athletes and uh, wanting to have the immediate gratification, right? So it's funny because at the same time that a Rod spoke. We had another conversation um, with another gentleman who uh, we had a, like a football panel, like athlete panel, right? And on the athlete panel, they brought up the situation now about the athletes that are actually, um, you know, they're getting paid from from high. They're getting paid in college today, and right. So there's, by the way, seventy people watching. Hit the like button so just real quick. Uh, so the athletes today are getting paid money for their likeness. 
And so some of the athletes in college are driving like Lambos and Bentleys and all these cars. But the majority of them, when they leave college, are not going to make it to the NFL. And so they're going to go from making two, three hundred thousand dollars a year in college by selling their name to have a fifty, sixty thousand dollar job. And so I find that interesting because even though uh, athletes know the data, they know the statistics, they still make the same mistakes. They still continue to waste the money and not invest. And that's why I brought up A Rod as a good example because A Rod did the opposite. He took his money and invested it. And then over the long term, right, when he left his career, he had even more wealth than he had that he earned. So I, I, I thought it was really important as a way to start off the conversation today. Uh, someone else that I had a chance to meet at this event was uh, this particular gentleman on stage. His name was Michael Harris. And Michael Harris um, and Ken Oliver, right? So Michael Harris, um, most of us do not know him. I did not know of him before this particular event. And so Michael Harris, for those of you who do not know, uh, he was one of the co-founders of Death Row Records. And so he actually served 33 years in prison. And um, he founded Death Row Records in prison. Now, what's fascinating about Michael's story was not only did he start this record label that did over a billion dollars in sales in prison, um, what's even more fascinating is while he was in prison, he said that he read over 3,000 books. 3,000 books. He actually said the reason why he named the record label Death Row was because he said that he saw younger guys on Death Row and he wanted to say that this place was built for black and brown people and we didn't know it yet. So the idea was to discourage people from going to death row. And that's why he wanted to create an entertainment company to give people an alternative rather than doing illegal activities that would take them right uh, down that pathway and lead them into the death row. And so I got a chance to actually talk with him uh, and we actually exchanged information. And so we talked about some opportunities, right? There I am with him. And so this was literally last night, right? Literally last night. Um, as you can see, I have on the same suit, same shirt, everything. So it's literally last night. So, but what's fascinating about this, right? Is that not only did he read 3000 books, all right, hold on, I'm gonna take you back to one other guy. Um, Ken Oliver, right? Who's on the stage right there. Ken served 24 years in prison. And guess what? Ken said he read over a thousand books in prison, right? Now, check this out. Ken read a thousand books in prison, a thousand. He was given 52 years to life sentence. Wait, do y'all hear me? He was given 52 years to life. It was during a time where they had a three strikes rule. And so it was his third strike, even though there was nobody harmed, there was nobody injured, all right? He, was, he said he was a passenger in a car that was a stolen vehicle, but it was his third strike, so they gave him 52 years of life. So while in prison, he read over a thousand, he, well, he said a thousand books, not over. He read a thousand books is what he said. And he actually sued the state of California. Check this out, follow me now. He sued the state of California. He won his case, right? He sued the state, and then they overturned his case, and they freed him. Did y'all hear what I said? He read a 1,000 books, sued the state, he had a 52-year sentence to life in prison, right? Meant he was never going to get out before he was 84. Sued the state because of all his knowledge. Won, and then they, they overturned a sentence, and he got out. Two years later, okay, two years later, hold on. All right, this is Ken. He is the, if you don't know about Checker, here, I'll pull him up for you. Right? And again, he shared this story with us. I, this We're going somewhere with this, right? 
Um, two years later, right, he is right the vice president of Checker Org, and he's the executive director of Checker Foundation, right. Um, and so he, what he went to tell us was that he, when he came out, because of his, that's right, he freed himself. When he came out, he went to, because he had already read books on law and legal and he was able to write his stuff, he actually worked um, as, um, I think it was a paralegal in a law firm, right, like writing briefs because he had already successfully wrote his way out of jail. So he knew how to write like legal briefs and, and, and review them. And so he quickly um, basically exceeded that position. And then um, he got promoted to doing policy at the state level. And then he wanted to create a program to be able to help other people that were in his same situation, right? So he asked the state of California for $30 million for his program idea. While in pursuit of that, <laughs> While sitting on the board, uh, California, helping with justice reform. And by the way, look these guys up, okay? I want you to look these guys up, okay? Um, while doing that, okay, you can see, look at his uh, job history, right? Look at his job history. Picks up from 2020. 1990 to 2020, no job history. You see that? Look him up. Um, and so while doing that, right, uh, an entrepreneur that had raised money to help with justice reform uh, reached out to him to discuss uh, having an actual person who spent time behind bars helping to lead the company that this technology company was supposed to help solve some of these issues. All right, Maurice said make it bigger. Okay, I'll pull it back up. So. All right, so here he is right here, Ken Oliver, check him out. All right, and so uh, he was given an opportunity to now lead this company that was uh, a, basically a technology company founded by some wealthy people that create some sort of solutions that help with justice reform. But the point being that I wanna talk about is how these particular individuals were able to change their life around. And it's fascinating to me because at the same time, I see so many of us out here making excuses for our situation. Oh, you knew I was gonna go there. I, I, I don't know how y'all didn't know I was gonna go there today. I, 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 I think y'all should have known I was gonna go there. I, I, I was leading up to it. And this is a perfect segue into what we're gonna talk about today, right? So many people, you heard what Colin said. Colin went back and said, take the free course, right? So many of you out there have all your freedoms, have all your rights, have the ability to choose where you go, the ability to choose how you spend your time, the ability to choose how you spend your day. And yet you're making excuses for where you're at and why you're in this situation. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. I'm feeling good today. So yeah, did y'all hear what I said? So All right, how about now? Okay. Sound back, is the sound back on? Sound, sounds check, sound check. No sound. All right, I gotta take this other camera off. No sound. Okay, Maria said yes. Okay, all right, so I got, I'm switching, switching between cameras. All right, somebody said no sound. All right, my man D Ward said it's good now. Good, good, good. Yes? All right, we'll give you good. All right, no, what I was saying was that. So many of you um, out here, you said it's back. I don't know what back means. I'll switch. I'll put back on this camera. All right, I'll take this one off. 
I'll just I'll stick with this camera. All right, so good. All right. Um, so what I'm saying is that so many of us out here, right? We have all of our freedoms. We got all of our choices, decisions to make, people to spend time with, places to go, food to put in our bodies, right? No one tells us where to go, where to come, how to go, and we still find a way to make excuses. Yeah, yeah. Not only do we have all of our freedoms, right? Um, you take for granted your freedoms. Not just do you have them, you take them for granted. All of you out here, right, feel like I got another day, I got another week, I don't have to do it right now, I can put off another moment, I can, um, I can procrastinate, right, because, uh, you know, I can wait till Saturday, I can wait till Sunday, I can wait till the holidays, I can wait till Christmas, right? And that's the way that you operate. And that's the, ap ap the apparatus from which you operate. That's your, your modus apparatus. Is that when we look up, right, how people spend their time, okay? And it's funny because when we talk about don't do the things that poor people do, I know that you like like I know that y'all know this already. Like this is, you know, the good thing about church is not that we don't know, right? The difference between good and bad or what's a sin and not a sin. They just remind us of that stuff, right? So it's not like I'm going to tell you guys something that you don't already know. How many people already know what are the activities that poor people do? Uh, most of you already know what that looks like. Right? I made a point to bring up these two guys that I met two days ago because they read a thousand books and three thousand books respectively. This man started a record label that became a billion dollar entity behind prison bars. I started, right, the second time in government contracting two hundred thousand dollars in debt. I was negative. So what? Excuse do you have besides, like Maria just said, you have too many options and you choose to be lazy instead of using it for good. 90 people watching, hit the like button. So what excuses are you giving yourself, right? You already know what's the deal. I don't even have to tell you that. When I told you they read a thousand books, right? Uh, how many people know they should be reading more? Raise your hand. How many people know that you should be reading more books? How many people know this? I've got three books behind me, right? And I guarantee you, half the people bought them, and about one tenth of you, maybe a, maybe one tenth or one one twentieth of you read the actual books. You just bought them and took them, and they actually didn't apply any of the stuff. They already said, people, everything that you want to know is already in the book. If you want to have better relationships, it's in the book. If you want to be healthier, it's in the book. If you want to be wealthier, it's in the book. If you want to know how to uh, treat yourself better, it, like all this stuff is already out. The information exists. So it's not lack of information that is stopping us, right? We, have, we, have, we are over any day with information. It's a lack of activity. It's a lack of applying information. It's a lack of putting it into use. It's a lack of practicing. It's a lack of being around people that uh, you're uncomfortable with, putting yourself out there. It's, you know, all of these things, right? So what are the things that, right, successful people do that poor people don't do? You guys know this stuff. But like you said, we don't go over it anyways because my job, right, is twofold, right? My job, I feel like we already have taught y'all government contracting. Uh, in fact, we, when I was in San Diego, okay, by the way, 
I want to say something else. I, I, I got to say this because I think this is important. Um, how many people heard, right, uh, about Think and Grow Rich? Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. Anybody heard Think and Grow Rich? Yeah? Think and Grow Rich. Most people. But most people, right, you know what they do? They just act, right? The book says think and grow rich, not act and grow rich. Think. Think, right? Not act. We don't spend enough time thinking. So if you want to write down the first thing that separates you is spend more time thinking, right? Okay. The reason, you know why I met this guy? It's funny because um, the reason why I met him yesterday, I brought that into my subconscious, right? Everything that I ask for, I receive. Everything. Uh, if you spend any time around me, right, you know that when I have an idea in my head and I start to manifest it, it comes to fruition. A week ago, my son and I talked about how do we expand our content to new audiences? And we said we need to start connecting with the entertainment industry. That was a week ago. I thought about it and I said, you know, we sat down and said, we need to connect with people in the entertainment industry because we need to make this more popular. There's a reason why. You see me today that I'm dressed up. I'm not in a hoodie, right? I'm not in my polos, right? Um, there's a reason why I'm dressed up today. We're being very intentional about our actions and how we present ourselves. We're being intentional about everything that we're doing. Matter of fact, that's our new word for 2024 is be intentional. I'm not letting life happen to me. I'm happening to life. A lot of you are letting things happen to you. You're being reactive to whatever happens. You're not being proactive and taking life by the balls and taking it in your own hand. So the reason why I met him yesterday was because I manifest that. I said to Brandon, I want to be in the entertainment space so that we can make GovCon right, more widely known and we can make it so that people, right, because I don't have I can't get the reach with just doing the way I've been doing it for the last six years. So I have to go to people that have industry reach, that people look up to, right? And I have to connect with some of those folks. And guess what? Within a week of me manifesting that, um, him and I met, and we didn't just meet, okay? You see us in a picture? We're not just in a picture together. Uh, he told me, take his phone number, I took his phone number, put it in my phone. He said, call him. I called him. He, sitting right in front of me, saved my name and number in his phone while we were there presently. By the way, and I'm sure you guys aren't surprised, he had three girls around him. And guess what? He had one literally under his arms, had two behind him, and he reached out to shake my hand to talk to me. And then he excused himself so we could talk. And guess what? Now we're having a conversation. And guess what? I saw him give out his number to multiple people. But as I was saying, line, but I was the only person that I saw him save the number, my number, so that we could talk later. And you know what I said to him? I said, have you ever heard of government contracting before? I said, the government, every time there's a spending bill, is a trillion dollars, two trillion dollars. I know you're proud of death row records, did over a billion dollars. I know that the music industry has done billions of dollars, but this is trillions of dollars. And you have access to people that have resources that if we can put that together, right, we could do some great things. He said that he said to me, this is why I come to these events, because he's expanding his reach into other markets. Think about it. He's at a private equity event, speaking on stage, 
to tech investors to fuck like we've got we have black and brown people in the room that raise a hundred million, two hundred million, a billion dollars, two billion dollars. What were y'all doing Saturday morning? Let me ask you this. What were y'all doing Friday night when A Rod was speaking at this event? You could have went for a couple hundred bucks. You don't have to stay in a hotel. The hotel was a little pricey because it's by Bell Harbor. So the hotel was about 500 bucks. But you you know, I know people that just came there for the event and left. So I want to say that because what I see happening here and is that a lot of us, right? That's him, by the way, with Dre and Snoop Dogg. I want you guys to look it up because Snoop Dogg, if you don't know this, just bought about, um, he bought Death Row Records. And guess who his partner is? Harry O. Harry O. So I, look, don't be surprised, okay? Don't be surprised, right? I want, I'm, look, for you watching me, I'm sharing with you guys what we're doing. He's not the only one. This brother stood up as well. He did nine years in prison. He's in the music industry, right? He said he's from Marcy Projects where Jay-Z was at. He was stayed in the same place at Jay-Z at the same time. He said while he was in prison, his friend was representing, um, what did he say? He said uh, Mary J. Blige. And so when he got out of prison, he was looking at Harry O, and he got inspired by him, and he jumped into the music industry. And the same thing, I walked up to him, and I told him about government contracts, and I said, you got access to entertainers. Let's talk. He actually wants to meet next week. But unfortunately, I'm going away with my family for vacation tomorrow. But I manifest this thing. I manifest it, right? I manifest it. So let's get back to the conversation. We already know. It, 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 we, yeah, we're going to church, man. We got to go to church. We got to go to church today. We got to go to church. We already know, right? What are the things that we're supposed to be doing? We already know these things, but we're not doing them, right? Um, Patricia says, awesome point about manifesting, thinking that working with your son is terrific. I'm here to learn and grow, see if I can help others on the way. That's what it is. So many of us have talents and skills and gifts, and we're wasting them. They're atrophying. You know what atrophy means? When you don't use it, you lose it. Um, many of us haven't picked up a book since college or since we had to take a test for a certification for a class to get a job. Many of us have shut off our learning. Many of us have thrown in a towel on the fact that we can change our life, the fact that we can do something different, the fact that we can make time. Let's go back to what I was talking about, right? We know these things, but we got to say it. So, you know, my... I want to, it's interesting because I want to say you can't cheat the game. Right? 103 people watching, hit the like button. We hey, we 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 look, this is y'all Sunday evening church service with the GovCon Giant himself. Alright? So look, it's funny because someone said think about bills, right? Everybody's got bills, but somehow or another, right? Check this out. The average American citizen over 15 years old, right, spends 16 minutes and 48 seconds reading for personal pleasure. Okay. 16 minutes, 48 seconds. The average adult spends 294 minutes per day with TV. Okay. Maybe you don't watch TV. We'll kick in social media, YouTube. We'll kick it all in under one bucket. That's 4.9 hours, 45 hours a day, 34 hours a week. You can't tell me you don't have time. Okay. People say they don't have time. Let's take that one. The data shows different, right? Netflix is not a multi-billion dollar company because nobody's watching their shows. Jim Rohn says, right? I love Jim Rohn, by the way. Does everybody know Jim Rohn? I say things. I don't want. I don't want to talk over my head. Jim Rohn says, "Right, 
He says, don't go where the poor people go. Don't do the things that poor people do. Don't read the things that poor people read. Don't talk like they talk. Don't walk like they walk. Don't listen to what they listen to. Don't watch what they watch. And it's interesting because I found myself so disconnected from the regular person nowadays because I don't, I'm not around, the people that I'm around are high value men, particularly most of the time, and high value women. And so what I find is I'm very disconnected from what's happening in the actual world. And what I found is when I start talking to my successful people, they are also just as disconnected as me from the day to day activities of what's happening in the world. I don't even know what's going on with the weather. I don't have no idea what's going on with the weather. And people say, oh, how can you not know about the weather? Because I don't have any notifications on my phone that tell me about weather. One of my, I'm not going to talk about it, a friend of mine who's now was a student who turned friend, um, he might be on here. Okay, he told me that now that he's been coming more successful, some of his friends are telling him to dim his light and not talk about his success. And I asked him a question. I said, you know, now that you're doing these millions of dollars in contracts um, and, you know, he's, he, you know, you've been extremely successful. I said, um, he said, I have nothing to talk about with my friends anymore. And in fact, they don't even want me talking about my business because they're, they feel like I'm bragging. So what happens is, and it's funny because somebody talked about my son. You know, he's becoming more and more disconnected from his friends, talking about the everyday minutia things that people get caught up in. And I find that even people in my family do that. You know, we get caught up in... Um, situations that don't impact our lives, that don't impact our family, that have no bearing on us. And we go down rabbit holes on social media about um, stuff that other people are involved with that has nothing to do with us. And the 106 people watching, you know, how, how many people are going to be honest, right? How many people on here are honest and going to tell me that they're, they've been in that situation before? I can tell you, I've done it before, right? How many people are honest? You've been on social media and you, you went down a rabbit hole and you spent two, three, four hours. So anybody or it's just me? I mean, I've done it before, right? Politics, TV shows, right? Been watching Netflix. Netflix don't need no more money. They don't need your money, right? What about learning your craft? What about learning your business? My son is a great kid, right? And it's funny because now that he's leading, he didn't get there through nepotism. He writes up things, gives it to adults, and they don't read it. And it's interesting because he goes, what am I supposed to do, Dad? I put everything on this document, and grown people did not read the document. You are the same grown people that are telling me you're having a hard time with understanding government contracting when we got a thousand videos on it. You're the same people that ask questions that are already inside of videos for a course that you paid for. Do you know that people pay for my course and don't do the activities? That's a tragedy. That is a tragedy. People think that they're going to get this by osmosis. It ain't happening by osmosis. It's not going to happen because you bought the book and you set it down. You bought the course and you set it down. You bought three courses and you set it down. You bought three more programs and you didn't do the activities. And you went back to Netflix and chill. You know, you're not in the chat. You're not on Federal Help Center. By the way, real quick, I'll pull it back up. Federal Help Center, go over right now. A man Collins in the room. Head over to Federal Help Center and sign up today. What's going on, Tam? How you living? Happy Sunday. We at church today. Head over to Federal Help Center, okay? I'm gonna. We're gonna share some things. 
head over to Federal Hope Center right now. Just drop in the chat. Make sure you sign up. It's free. It costs you nothing to participate. Nothing to participate. Right? Joining the Federal Help Center costs you nothing. It's free. I don't know how much better you get for free. Only the thing is, you guys still invest your time, right, and your energy. That's it. So let me show you something that's fascinating, right? Again, your boy, I'm always in the room. I'm always in a room. So like sitting when you go to these things, you know what's you know what's the you know what's the hardest thing for me when I go to events? Can anybody guess what is my biggest challenge when I go to events? Okay. You know what my biggest challenge is when I go to events? I do not have enough time to meet all the people. People introduce me to person after person after person after person after person. I can't remember everybody's name. I can't remember what everybody does. The hardest thing is literally just basically meeting, just being over and, and inundated with people and them telling me about their story and what they're doing and their success. Let me tell you what's happening in this picture right here. Um, the guy in the middle, um, former football player, he's now an investor. He invested in this popcorn company that you see on the screen. All right. He gave out the popcorn to everybody. You see that popcorn says UFC on it? He knows it says UFC. That popcorn company that he invested in did a partnership with Dana White and is now going to be part of all the UFC. The girl to the right, I don't know her name, we just happen to have table. She works for NASCAR, Formula One. And what she taught me was that uh, Formula One starts preparing for their, their next year's race two months before the current year's race. So they start preparing 14 months in advance for their Formula One race in Miami. And I said, why so much? She goes, we have 95,000 people a day that comes to this event. So now I know in planning my events, I should be planning 14 months out. Okay. Um, the one to the middle in the pink, when she introduced herself, she helps companies get non-dilutive funding. Does anybody know what that means? SBIRs, STTRs, NIH grants. She helps tech entrepreneurs get $5 million grants to fund their tech projects. This is one lunch table. One. This is one lunch table I sat with. One. Just one. That was one. Literally, that's one table. One. One table. Hold on. Let me keep going. Everybody you want is there. This guy. Manny Ruiz. Nuestra Stories. Okay. Uh, Manny sold his first company. He exited his company. Right. Manny and I uh, met around the bar area. We're talking, talking, chopping it up. Um, I didn't realize it was him. He was on stage earlier. And uh, so he did not know that government contracts, you didn't have to be a minority to get government contracts. He's already had a successful exit. And so now um, he's, he parlayed that into this other program, Nuestra Stories. Let me go top over here to the Veterans Network because this is really cool. Um, early morning walk run to the beach. Right, San Diego, California, VIB Network. By the way, uh, shout out to Rebecca. Uh, she gave me a free ticket to go, so I didn't have to pay for my entrance. How do I get a free ticket? I'm giving to people. I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving. Some of y'all are so selfish. Y'all don't give nothing. Y'all don't give y'all time. If you don't have money, you can give your time. You can volunteer. Maria does it all the time. At the conferences, Randy and Maria both volunteered at Sammy in exchange for reduced ticket prices. Like, if you can't give your money, you could give your time. But so many of you are so selfish, you just want people to give to you, and you don't want to give first and expect, you know, you guys have all these expectations, 
and you just want it, somebody to take care of you and supposedly give to you without you actually giving anything back. So it's funny because I said, let me. One, one thing I try to do is I try to participate in all the activities. So I, I usually go. I mean, I try to stay out to the after activities, and then, but I, but then I don't want to overindulge because I got to get up in the morning and do the morning activities. So this is my morning crew that I ran with, right? Um, so this is my morning crew. Now again, I don't know these people. We're all dressed in regular clothes, so I don't know them. But I got up in the morning, we walked and ran. Turns out that the lady in the jumpsuit over here works for Health and Human Services. Bam! Health and Human Services. All right? The lady in the black works for IVMH. Okay? Um, that's the Syracuse University program for veterans. And so. When we actually end up going later on that day, when I went to dinner, okay, let me see if I have a picture. Let me see if I have a picture. I don't think we took a picture together. No, we did not take a picture together. All right, but when we went to dinner, no, don't have a picture of her at dinner. Either way, so we went to dinner together. We went to, well, we went to the VIB dinner. I met her at dinner. And I said, hey, you were the person that we jogged with this morning. So what do you do? She goes, well, I work for IVMH. I said, that's interesting because I've been trying to be a speaker at IVMH for the past few years. And I said, Stephanie Adu and Sheena Parker are both um, students of mine that are now IVMH members. And they knew Sheena because Sheena Parker had just won an award there. And so it's interesting because um, she goes, really? So she goes, we work with this particular organization. And Maria, uh, you know the organization that we reached out to that said that we could not be an exhibitor for, that veterans organization? Yeah, that's the one that she works for. And so um, I told her about the organization, and I told her about what we do. And uh, she says, I wish I had known that a few months ago, because I could have brought you in to be our speaker for our entrepreneurship program, as opposed to this other group. And so now, I said, it's okay, I'm not going anywhere. I go, so now she's going to put us in the line for next year to speak at this organization that's put together by Syracuse University. So once again, right, um, I'm spending time in places where the people that I want to meet, the people that I want to do business with are spending time in. How many of you out there can say the same thing? How many of you, right, and it's funny because most of us, right, uh, that went to college, we were very social in college because they, they set up all these different events for us to socialize. And so that's why we have such strong networks from college. But after we leave college, we typically start to lose those networks and those connections. And if you are following me on Instagram or Facebook or look at any of my stories, you'll see that I've actually attended one, two, three, Four events in the last week. And so I literally probably have about three dozen, four dozen contacts that I've met in the last seven days that I got to follow up on, including uh, the second um, largest owner of Lamborghinis in the country, um, including. The, the Snoop Dogg's uh, partner, Death Row Records, including right um, leaders from national organizations. So again, where are you spending your time? Where are you spending your energy at? Okay, what you know? It's funny they said my title was aggressive today, but the the if you listen to the beginning, what I talked about, right, with the gentleman. 24 years in prison, 30 weird years in prison. We don't see ourselves in a prison because we're not behind bars. But if you're not living the life that you want to live, if you're not doing things you want to live, you are in prison too. A lot of you, your mind's been in prison, right? Because guess what happens? You know how many people tell me, 
oh, Eric, I didn't do such and such a thing because of this reason. Oh, Eric, I didn't reach out to you because I didn't want to bother you. Oh, Eric, uh, so you didn't take a step. You gave yourself an excuse for not taking the next step. So you self-sabotage. So you already in prison. You just don't see it because there ain't no bars. That's the only difference. You don't see the bars, but I see the bars. I know when people are lying with me. I already know it because they talk like I talk. They think like I think. They go to places I go. I see the same people. Maria see the same people. Hey, Maria, don't when we go to those conferences, we see the same people. By the way, I didn't. I, let me. You know what's one thing I forgot to finish. Let's talk about this. So check this out. Let me go back to this picture here. Let me go back to my my. Let me go back to my jogging group. Okay. When I first got there, the guy in the black hat over here, his name was Jackson. Jackson was on my podcast. Jackson's all the way to the right with the scully on, with the black suit, and you got Griffin in the middle with the cap on. So Jackson's company is called Black Box Safety. When I got there to this event, right, um, VIB shot Rebecca, VIB Network, okay, when I got to the event, Jackson was the first one of the first people I met when I came into the hotel room. And I said to Jackson that I hadn't eaten all day because I had, took a 6 a.m. flight. And then by the time I landed and got there, you know, it's now California time. So it's like, I don't know, it's like four o'clock in the afternoon. The first thing Jackson said to me, he's like, Eric, he said, oh, would you, you want the keys to my car to take and go get some food? It's the first thing he said. He offered me the keys to his car to go if I want to go get some food. I have not seen this man in a year. A year, but I see him every year at these conferences, and he's on my podcast. And then I saw him one time in between. And the first thing he did was say, "Hey, would you like keys to my car to go get some food?" For those of you who did not listen to, to Jackson's story, at Black Box Safety, they they start they start selling to the prison products. See, it's interesting because you guys watch the highlights of my videos. You say that you want to do this stuff. You say that you're serious about this. You want to sell products. Matter of fact. Uh, this guy right here, R Threat 08, is leading classes inside a federal help center on how to sell products to the government. But you're not even there. You're not even in federal help center doing the things that you say you want to do. So let's go back. So Jackson, um, a man Jackson over here, we were talking to Griff, and Jackson asked me for help with a problem that he has. And uh, you know what Jackson's problem is? Right now, and um, his company is at about $17 million this year. They're projected to do 30 to 35 million next year. He sells products. 30 to 35 million. His problem is he's graduating from small business status. And he doesn't know what to do. I met Jackson four or five years ago. He was doing a couple million. Now he's about to hit 30 million, 35 million. If you had came to this event with me and you sold products, or if you were in a federal help center and you reached out to me and said, who should I talk to? I would have told you to talk to Jackson. If we pull up this video right now, Maria, pull up this video. Oh, Maria, she already, she already did it for me. I'm trying to. If we pull up this video right now, um, unfortunately, Maria, I can't get that link. Dang it. Um, Maria, can you drop it in Slack or something for me? So I can grab it. If we pull up this video right now, Maria, how many, how many views does that video have? I guarantee his video has literally probably a thousand views, if that. Y'all are looking for entertainment. Y'all not looking for information. Y'all looking to be entertained. 
And that's sad because we are here giving y'all everything that you want. Let me keep going. Let me keep going, man. Let me, let me, look. Ali Bay, okay? Ali Bay, his wife got sick last year. Okay, Maria said 2,000 views. Um, and he was telling me that, um, you know, he was thinking about leaving the company because, you know, there was a situation with wife. And guess what? He put his company for sale and he got full asking price. <laughs> But y'all wouldn't know that because y'all not there talking to these people. You know, you're not there. You're not in the room. Heather, my certified company. Okay. And I can keep telling the story at the story at the story at the story. All right. What are we talking about? Hey, Eric, uh, we've got this person that has funding to help small businesses through technical assistance. Can you and I talk about how we could do something like that together? Absolutely. My opportunities don't come out of thin air, guys. But again, listen. You want me? It's funny because I, <laughs> I gotta laugh, man. Hey, because a lot of people. Again, if you listen to Jim Rohn, when I was broke, 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 broke. broke all I did was listen to Jim Rohn. I just plugged him in. I read all the books, everything. I doubled down. Because you guys are comfortable, you're not taking it serious. Because, you know, you make fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year, you know, you don't have a sense of urgency. You're not desperate, right? You ain't struggling. You're not like, you know, out there in the streets, homeless, you know, like that. So that's why you act this way. That's why you carry yourself this way. Because Right. That comfort, that security is keeping you from having like that hunger and that desire and that will. But what do they say? The job. Right. That could be a prison. Right. That comfort is a prison. Maybe this, the job is good. Maybe you again, think about how you can be an entrepreneur if you want to stay at your job. Think of, you know, what, one of the books that uh, Harry O said he read was there's an almanac on philanthropy. Anybody ever heard of the almanac on philanthropy? I ain't never heard of it before. Almanac on philanthropy. He said he read the whole thing. He read an almanac. Y'all hear me? <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm talking about? The man ain't just reading a regular book. Look. It's in my Google search now. This thing was like the Bible type thing. The Almanac on Philanthropy. He read a freaking Almanac, guys. <laughs> like, listen, you guys are not good people, right? And this man over here reading Almanacs. Of course he going to catch us. He going to pass all of us. The man reading Almanacs on our, look, I'm sorry. I don't even know how to beat that. So I remember people making fun of me, right, for not going places, not going facts. And you know what I, my comeback was to them? Whenever people make fun of me, it's Eric, oh, you're a hermit. You don't go here. You don't go there. They say, I don't see you at this place. I don't see you at that place. I said, I don't see you at the bank. I said, guess who does know me? The bank. I said, all the tellers. I went to my bank that I bank with in Clueston, Florida, that I hadn't been to in years. And you know what? I walked into the bank and they had some new tellers because they always change the tellers. And I said, hey, let me question, is uh, is Erica here? I said, is Juan here? I said, yeah, Juan too. I said, cool. I said, can I see him? They said, yeah, can you tell him who are you, you know, who you are? And I said, I'm, my name is Erica. And again, having not been to the bank and and met seeing him for, I don't know, two years. He was like, hey, Mr. Coffee, how are you? What are you up to? What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. You know, guess what? My relationship at my bank is so strong that I, I've done this before, by the way. I, I, I've done this before. 
My son called the bank because I was out of town. I said, call the bank, speak to, ask for Erica, okay? Now, it's a local bank. I said, call the bank, speak to Erica, ask Erica to print me out some checks for this account, and then tell her that this person, Lewis, is going to come pick up the checks on my behalf. I had my son call the bank to tell the bank to print me out some checks because, you know, and the local small banks, they can still print out checks. And then I thought I had him put in my car. And then I had somebody else go pick up the checks for me and then bring them to me an hour and a half from where I was at. How many of y'all could do that? How many of y'all could do that? And, and it, you know, it's funny because I say this stuff because this is real life. And I, I've always tried to like hold back and um, be kind of like what, what, you know, the guy was telling about. I always try to like dim my light, but I'm not really even shining my light bright. I'm just telling you that when you start to build relationships and you spend money with people, right, and you do business with people, then they look at you differently. They treat you differently. And now you have more uh, freedoms and privileges than other people who don't do that. But I didn't get that, right? by going to happy hours, right, all the time. I'll tell you another story. Talking to um, this person that I met at the event, and I told her I do a YouTube channel. And she goes, oh, I do too, right? A lot of people, when I say I do a YouTube channel, they like to tell me, oh, they also have a channel, right? But they have a side job. So they assume that, you know, like we're the same. And uh, it's funny because, by the way, 120 people watching, 120 people watching, uh, hit the like button really quick. And if you have not already done this, please do yourself the biggest favor in the world right now. Head over to Federal Help Center. OK, we're going to be teaching you. We teach almost every day. We have free live trainings, free live trainings. It, it's our alternative to Facebook. We're getting away from Facebook because Facebook is garbage in terms of they want to keep you distracted so you can stay cheap, so you can stay in the minutia, so you can stay in prison in your mind. I'm 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 for, I'm freeing everybody today. I'm freeing all y'all. We we listen, we're gonna be free. We have big plans for all of you. You guys have no idea. Like we have humongous plans for everybody that's tuned in to me. Look, y'all could go to other people. That's cool. But for those who want to rock with your boy, we got big plans. So please make sure you invest your invest your time, invest your energy into the space. Look at look 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 look. What's that? He's not lying. Biggest win. Join the federal help center. You know what? I had Facebook groups before. You know the problem with all these social media platforms. They want you distracted. Their goal is to tell you about somebody's dog and somebody's wedding and somebody died and somebody's sick. And that's fine and dandy. But that ain't going to help us to escape. We need out in a major, major, major way. I'm fighting for y'all. Y'all have no idea I'm fighting for y'all. I'm fighting for y'all. Fighting, like fighting, scratching, clawing, kicking, punching. I'm Listen. I'm tired. I don't be wanting to listen. I, I cut a red eye flight from San Diego Thursday night. Thursday night, I'm in San Diego. By the way, join Federal Hope Center real quick. Thursday night, yo, I'm in San Diego Thursday night. Right here. I'm at this dinner. Thursday night. Thursday night, I was at this dinner. Okay. Um, I literally told the lady, I got to catch a flight. I had a 9.30, 9.28 p.m. flight from San Diego, red eye to Miami, landing in Miami at 9.40 a.m. for my next event in Florida, in Miami, on the beach that started at 9.45. I literally took a red eye from San Diego. I went to dinner in San Diego, and I was having breakfast in uh, Val Harbor Surfside the next morning. And trust me, I was tired. But I know that 
what I'm fighting for is bigger than me. And I know that the results that everybody's going to get from this is going to be tremendous. Um, by the way, um, the guy in the middle, Gene Moran, put this event together. It was a private event. Again, um, for me showing up, I didn't have to pay for it. So I was, I was invited. I was one of his guests. He had us at the Grant Hotel in San Diego, a luxury hotel. Um, I paid nothing. He picked up all everything. I just had to be there. Okay. And um, I got an award. I'll show you guys a funny picture. Make you laugh real quick. Um, he gave me an award. Ah, come on, photo. Stop doing this. He gave me an award. Let's go down real quick. This was the dinner. Look, that was us at dinner. All right. And um, it was a private group. All of these persons are in the GovCon space. Here, I received an award today to be in his three ring circus. All right. And I basically sat down in front of the group and I talked about my journey and GovCon and YouTube and how I got there in front of some of these incredible people who, by the way, were doing 50 million, 75 million, 80 million dollars in business. And, um, but what they said was that different is better than better. And so what happens is what I was doing was something different than what people have traditionally been doing in the marketplace. Um, you will likely see uh, many of these people as future podcast guests on the platform. Oh, this is what I want to show you how to make you laugh. Look at my pants. See, that's what happened with none of my people around. You see, nobody ain't tell me my pants was caught up like that. Look how they have, took my picture. I told them, I said, why you let me have my pants like this in the picture? See, that's what happened when I'm a, when I got nobody in the room looking out for me saying, Eric, uh, can you pull your pants down before you take a picture? I like got high water pants on. <laughs> but, <laughs> but nevertheless, I uh, I went from there. I went from there to dinner, and I caught a flight. See, it's called uh, the Ringmasters. All right. Um, and what's more amazing is actually two of the people knew me before I even showed up, which is pretty pretty, pretty funny. So. Um, I'm going to have my phone on my All right, so listen. Isn't that funny, right? See, that would happen when my people are not around to tell me about, hey, pull your pants down. But that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. You know, that's all right. That's all right. No, 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 no. They actually go down, Maria. They just, somehow my stocks or something got caught in them. So they didn't, they didn't come back down. Um. Hey, look, Alice said, that's right, because they don't care about how you dress, right? And it's true. They care about the information. Nobody even saw that except me afterwards, you know? Um, but guess what happens? Guess what happens, you know? So when you're in there with these kind of people, right, and you say, Eric, dang, man, how'd you get that opportunity and that opportunity and that opportunity and that opportunity and that opportunity? Hey, baby, Shannon, that's right. Laughing all the way to the bank. Exactly. So, Eric, how did you get the opportunity? How do you put yourself in those situations? I'm actively participating in the community. I am an active participant. Maria sits on the board of Sammy. I've told you guys how many times I've said to you, you can participate. You're choosing not to. So let's talk about a couple things. Uh, I will tell you a story about the girl in the YouTube video. So first thing I'm gonna just I'm gonna go from this article because this article makes a lot of sense to me. Um, seven things rich people do that poor people don't do. We talked about reading books, right? On success, um, we're not intentional. You know, we're not intentional. Maybe you read one book or two books and then you stop. Um, I'm constantly reading books. I'm constantly uh, audible. I've got new books in. I listen to podcasts every single day. I walk five miles a day. I protect my everything. I protect all of my inputs. You know, it's funny um, when we go in and we look at these things, right, this list here. Um, spend time with successful people, right? 
And this is not, none of this stuff is rocket science, right? Okay, none of this stuff is rocket science. Sacrifice the present for the future. So let's talk, I'm gonna, I wanna touch on that, right? I wanna touch on that. The girl said to me, she does a YouTube channel and she's not getting views, right? Well, I'm a successful YouTuber, right? And you would think that she would ask me what I did. And she didn't because she didn't care because she just wanted to talk about what she talked about, which is fine. And that's most people, right? Two ears, one mouth. They're doing this. They're not listening. I shut up and pay attention, I promise you. When I went to that, that uh, cultural ship labs, I barely spoke. But I told her, I said, hey, look. Um, so she tells me, I told her about my event that we had downtown Miami, and she goes to, to talk about that she um, she lives in an icon building, which is a very expensive uh, building downtown. And I get it, like she, you know, she wanted, um, I guess they wanted me to think highly of her because she lives in this, you know, overpriced apartment building. And I said to her, well, if you wanna grow your YouTube channel, what I did was I moved away from downtown, I moved into a small town of 5,000 people, and uh, where they only had two bars. And then I basically was able to save money by not living in this expensive apartment. And I spent two years making my YouTube channel and I didn't need money because I went from a, a $2,500 a month apartment to a $40,000 house. And so basically um, for the amount of money I spent in like two years, I, could, I was able to pay off this whole house. But it allowed me to have the freedom to work on my craft for two years Uninhabited with having to have the time and of a job and having the responsibility of a lot of major bills. How many people would do that? She looked at me like I was crazy. And of course she did because she's not willing to make that kind of sacrifice. So when people complain to me about their bills and their situation and that like they've got too much responsibility, okay. Well, like Jim Rohn said, maybe you need to go to a slower class. Uh, downsize some of that responsibility. You know, downsize it. Um, I say there's more options out there besides staying in the same place with the same kind of job. If you're making thirty, forty thousand dollars a year, you could make that in any town in USA. You do not have to stay in a big city. If you're making, I would say, even 50000 a year. Most small towns have jobs that make 50000 a year. So um, the fact is most people, even all of you here, 117 people watching, Maria, how many likes do we have? Most of you would not make that decision. So when, when I tell you, when I say that, so you're being bogged down, right, with the, these are the results of the things that you did before. You put yourself in that situation, not me. I changed my situation. I uprooted my entire life and I moved to a small town and then I bought a house that was $40,000, like $44,000. You know what? I think I'm gonna show you guys the house. Y'all wanna see it? I showed you the house that my sister bought that she sold it. Let me show y'all the house. Let me see. There we go. There we go, right there. So when I doubled down, all right, check this out. Right there, 1053 Arkansas Avenue, Clewiston, Florida. When I moved from downtown, I bought this house right here, cash. I paid $44,000, $45,000 for it. Yeah, that's where I started making videos. Now, I didn't live there long. I lived there 
um, uh, I think about six months or eight months. I'm not sure. Something like that. I lived there for months until on the other side of town, they had a house open up. Right. But this is where I lived. This is the house that I purchased. Let me see if I can find it on Zillow. Um, and I lived here when I I moved from downtown and I could I'll show you my downtown apartment. Hold on. Let me pull it up. Give me one second. I'm gonna show you where I moved at. I was basically looking at the bay. I was at 2401. Um, I forgot the address. Was it first street? Let me see. No, not first. 2401. Oh man, I forgot my address in Miami. Either way, I'll just pull up where I stayed at. I'll pull up the area. But either way, the point being, um, I lived in this house. I'm going to show you. So I want you guys to see here. Let me see where is it at. I want y'all to see this. I want y'all to see it because you guys think that, um, you know, y'all be, listen, I don't know what y'all be thinking. All right. Does anybody remember when I started YouTube channel? 2017, first full year on YouTube. June of 2017, look what I bought this house for. $42,500. $42,000. That's what I bought this house for. Okay. So I went from uh, an apartment over $2,000 a month to a house that cost $42,000 for the whole house. By the way, it's a concrete block house. $42,000 all in cash. Bought it at an auction online. Anybody could have bought it. Look what they say. That was in 2017. All right. So I uprooted my life. Bought that house for $42,000. So it's funny because, like I said, people don't want to do, I would say people want to do what you do, not what you did. Y'all follow me? People want to do what you do, which, yeah, you want to come on here and you want to go and hang out with all these people and go to these cool places and like do these cool things, but you don't want to do what I did to get here. So when you tell me about your job and about bills, Okay, I moved from a place where it was super expensive to a place where um, I literally am now, um, I bought the house cash. I was able to cut down these monthly expenses from living downtown Miami. And uh, I went to shopping at Walmart, which frankly, I had personally never shopped at Walmart. But that's the only thing they had because they didn't have stores. So when you talk about don't do what poor people do, poor, that, that goes back to, what's this say? Number two, rich people sacrifice the present for the future. I sacrifice my present time for the future time. I had no problem paying for that place that I was living at in Miami. But I sacrifice because I wanted something more. I wanted something bigger. I wanted something better. I wanted to be in a different position in my life, right? I had already saw where that was going to take me. I saw where that was leading, and I wanted to change. So how many of you out here say, you know what? Hey, I see you. I hear you, right? How many of you out here are willing to do that? How many people would be willing to Basically, I mean, if this is, you know, it's funny. This is life or death. Y'all not treating it like life or death. Y'all not, we think we have infinite time. You don't have infinite time. You don't know what's going to happen to you, your family, a person in your family. And right now, there's no better time. 
There's no better time. So when 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 we when we talk about right right here, number three, rich people believe they're responsible for their own fate. Okay. So I knew, unlike this girl who talked about she makes YouTube videos. Uh, I told her, see, people want they they ask you for the formula, but they don't want the formula. They really don't. They want some secret formula. They don't want the real formula. So the real formula is move out of your apartment that's three thousand a month, move to a small town, or move to a smaller apartment that's half the price, so that you can save, so that you don't have to work as much, so that you can invest the time in growing and building your craft. That's the formula that I used. Oh no no I don't want to do that. All right well then you don't want the formula. You want to do it the way that you want to do it, but get the results. The way that I got the results. It don't work that way. So that's why I said you can't cheat the game. When we tell you guys to do activities and you don't do the activities, what do you think is going to happen to you? Really? What do you think is going to happen? How many more successful people do I have to put on stage for you guys to get that this works? How many more? Y'all need 10 more stories? 15 more stories? 20 more stories? How many more stories do y'all need? Somebody tell me I got 121 people watching. How many more success stories do we have to share for y'all to get it? How many more success stories? How many more people do you have to see win a contract for you to realize that the problem is not the government, the problem is you? How many more people do you have to sit to the sidelines and watch continue to win that you can talk to them? I'm not I'm not keeping nobody no secrets. If you came to my event, I introduce you to the winners. You could sit down with them, have lunch with them. These people are not made up. You meet them in real life. They're not just online. You've come and have breakfast, dinner, lunch, whatever. If you don't believe me, talk to them. How many more people do you need to see before you decide to get off your butt? How many more examples do you need? Different types of examples, products, services. How many more? I got almost 200 episodes on a podcast. How many more do y'all need? What else do you need to get up and get going? Right? What else do you need? I, 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 you know, I'm so sick of people with their foolishness telling me about, well, this or that. You know, and that's the thing that is really, really, really troubling. Okay? Um, you know, when we talk about being responsible for your own fate, right? Rich people believe they're responsible for their own fate. What did I say in the beginning of this? Be intentional. That's the word for 2024. Be intentional. If you're not in control of your time, somebody else can control your time, you got a problem. You have a problem. Going back to my example of prison. If you tell me that you don't control your time, you are echoing. The same thing that we talked about earlier with the guy being in prison for 24 and 33 years, respectively. Is that not prison? If you're sitting here saying out loud, don't write it in the chat. If you're sitting here saying out loud that you don't have control of your time, is that not a form of imprisonment? Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. I know, listen, I know y'all like me talking to y'all nice and sweet and calling y'all, but this ain't the time. This is not the time. This is not the place. Y'all got to go somewhere else and be coddled. I can't do it. I can't, I cannot do it anymore because we're going places and we need people that want to go with us to these places. And so, like I said in my other stuff, if you, if you're not that, if that's not true, then you got to go, go somewhere else because we need people that want to go with us where we're trying to go. Because we're going places and we're going collectively and we're taking people with us. And we're looking for good people to get on the boat. We're looking for great people to take over and run things. I can't, listen, I can't be in a room with people that raise 200 million, 500 million, a billion, two billion. I can't be in a room with these people, right? And then introduce you guys. And you ain't even took the class. You ain't read the book. 
You ain't studied. You ain't did your homework. You ain't even watched a video. Like, yo, man, y'all. And then y'all be like, Eric, put me on. How you want me to put you on, bro? I can't put you nowhere. What I'm going to do for you? What I'm going to say to the man when you can't perform, when you can't, when you can't show up? When you, like, what am I saying? I can't put you on. Come on, man. You're going to make me look bad. Bro, I can't look. You, you really asking for me to go over and above. But if you show up and you present yourself, like, my man, listen, let me tell you something. I know people that excel. Look, 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 look. I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show you better. I can tell you. I promise you. One thing about me. I can promise you this. I can promise you. I can promise you. Watch this. Watch this. Hold on. Listen. How many people know this guy right here? How many people know Tyrell Rose? All right. Yo, how, if, if you know him, right, I want you to put fire in the chat. If you don't know him, put like a, the, the face with the, like the question, or put a question mark in the chat. If you know my man Tyrell Rose, put fire, put a thumbs up, put a smile, put, you know, something celebration glasses. If you do not know him, okay, if you don't know this guy, right, right here, okay, put a question mark. I'm going to show y'all something. I'm going to show y'all something. If you don't know this man, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Yvette, what are we doing? Man, do it. What are we doing? Colin, what are we doing? Okay. Guess why y'all don't know him? Yvette, tell them boys what we're doing right now. Okay. See? So guess what? This guy is special. Very special. Very, very special. Colin, what makes him special? Yvette, what makes Tyrell special? What makes him special? Huh? Drop it in the chat. Tyrell, don't speak. Don't say nothing. I want Yvette to speak. I want Colin to speak. I want... Oh, Tracy Bird already said it. Dang it. Tracy Bird already said it. He won five contracts. He won first of five contracts in five months. And the reason why you don't know him, because you not in the room with him. If he was in the room on Federal Help Center, you would know him and you would know his story because he shared it with us in Federal Help Center. But y'all not there, so you don't know him. So everybody who put a question mark, that means you not over there with us talking and getting this information. So that's on you to show up. Yeah, Tracy, I know you on, You stay on game. That's on So that's on y'all. That is on you guys. So if you don't know him, that's because you not over here with us and Federal Help Center. And you not getting all of the stuff that you're supposed to be getting that we offer for free. Look, call it Monday, February 5th. He already got, we got events scheduled out to 2024. We got people winning grants and they're sharing a story. Okay, look. See, so if you're not in here. You have no idea what's going on. So you can't be in the chat. You can't be communicate. Look, 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 look at all this. You can't, you're not in here and you're not in the chat. And so you have no idea and you're being left out. Okay, look, here it is right here. See, right here, he says, I want to share with you when I was awarded my fifth contract as a prime this morning worth $81,000. But y'all not in the room. And it's free. And you're still not doing it. And you're blaming other people for the, the reason why you're in your situation. You're blaming your mama. You're blaming the fact that you grew up in a fatherless home. You're blaming a bad relationship. You're blaming that you're the middle child. You're blaming, you're blaming, you're blaming, you're blaming, you're blaming. I get it. It's easier. I get it. But 
Again, one thing I like about Gary B says, if I go to your Instagram, if I go to your Facebook, and I see you at this party, that party, this event, that event, this thing, the next thing, you're always at somebody's stuff. You're always at somebody's house. You're always at, you know, you're, you're bragging about you went here and there and this other place. And it's not tied to growing your business and building your business. And then you want to ask me for my time to give you for free because you don't have money. You better reconsider. Because I don't have free time to give nobody. I don't gave y'all free game. I just left the conference where one of my podcast guests tried to introduce me to this girl. And he said, hey, do you, you know, I want you to introduce Mr. Coffee. And you know what she said? She says, oh, I know Mr. Coffee. I use him as YouTube videos with my first two contracts. I didn't know her. I didn't know that was going to happen. He didn't know I knew her. And you know what? By the way, Maria, that was Eric Dockwright. And you know what he said? When he saw that a complete stranger that he tried to connect me with had already known me and won my contract, I said that one of my goals this year is to get a major sponsor, right, to cover our GovCon Giants association dues for all of you guys. So if anybody knows any big corporate companies out there that want to support small businesses, uh, diverse businesses, women-owned businesses, veterans, please, please, please reach out to us. Um, we're looking for a corporate sponsor like a Verizon, like a Comcast, uh, maybe even an Amazon, AWS, to sponsor GovCon Giants, the organization. Um, but I have been spreading that word and that message out there. And so when he saw that happen, he said to me, Eric, let me and Stu from Fava help you go find a corporate sponsor for GovCon Giants. We're looking for someone to write us a check anywhere between two to five million dollars so that we could focus on programs and not have to worry about raising money to do the things we want to do. So I want to put that request out there for everyone out there. If you know of any corporate companies or anybody that works at corporate companies that can make some introductions, we're looking for people to help us um, that want to pick up and help support all of you guys out there, the thousands of you that want to get into this so that we can continue offering better programming, more programming. Uh, and so, again, I just want to put that word out there. So uh, she told him that she used my content to win contracts. So for me, when I hear people that are strangers to me, that I meet at an event that says they watch my free videos and won contracts, I can't accept you guys' excuses. I can't accept it. When I'm telling you about stories of people who did nine years in prison, 20 years of prison, 33 years of prison, I can't accept your excuses. When I personally was facing my lawsuits, that was a million dollars, 700,000 plus what they owed me. And then when I, when I had to settle with them and I'm a half a million dollars in the hole, $200,000 in a loan, $300,000 in my bank account, I can't side with you, foolishness. When I see that you are posting pictures of drinking activities and you're telling me that you don't have time to read a, my book or to read Judy Bratt's book or to read um, Lori Smith's book. By the way, Lori Smith worked on a multi-billion dollar project. Do you think that if you bought this book that might cost you eight bucks or 10 bucks, right? Okay, this lady worked on a multi-billion dollar project. If you buy her book and you go on LinkedIn and you say, hey, Lori, I bought your book. I read it. I thought it was great. I'd love to talk to you for 30 minutes. What do you think she's going to say? Shoot, get out of here. Or she's going to say, wow, you're an exceptional person. I don't get many requests like that. What do you think she's going to say? Number one or the latter. If you buy Judy Bratt's book. And you read Judy Bratt's book. And you say, hey, Judy Bratt, I read your book. I saw your shows with Eric Coffey. Um, and I would love to have 30 minutes of your time. You got to come at people differently. You got to come at people differently. 
I, it can't, it's not enough for me to want your success. You have to want it. It's not enough for me to want better for you than you want for yourself. That don't even make no sense. That makes no sense. So for those of you who missed out, I'll put it back on the screen. Look, my man Mendoza said, I talked to Judy on Friday. My man Ebro says right here, hey, I won my first contract watching Eric's videos and I bought the course. Still the best money ever spent. 117 people hit the like button. This is the house that I moved from downtown Miami to this house where I lived at when I made my YouTube videos. Um, I lived there for eight months. I stayed in that town, the city, for three years. Okay. Um, and so I sacrificed. I went all in on my dreams, on my goals. I went all in on what I believe, right, where I want to go at. I went all in. And guess what? Today, does any of that matter? Does anybody care that I lived in a house? Wait, y'all hold it against me that I lived in a house? Does anybody really care that I lived there? And y'all be like, oh, Eric, you lived in that old $40,000 house. Uh, nobody really says that, okay? Nobody don't really ask me, hey, when you started, where did you live at? What kind of house? Nobody don't say that to me. Um, nobody says, hey, Eric, you know, um, hey, where'd you start from, right? What did you have? when you People don't say that. You know who says that? Poor people. Poor people say, oh, well, um, when you first, you know, uh, you know, I heard someone make a, a, a we have a, a video with Maria posting her first consultant check. Right. And Maria's first consultant check. Um, here, I'm going to show you guys this real quick. So after I, I left that house, I bought this house here. OK. So this is the second house that I bought. I moved from the $40,000 house to this house right here. Um, I bought this house and I paid $140,000, I think. I'm trying to show you a picture of it. Oh yeah, here's a good picture. So I bought this house next. So I moved from the $40,000 house to this house. I bought for one hundred and forty dollars all right. So I bought this house and the reason why I bought it because you guys heard of house hacking. Anybody know house hacking? So house hacking is when you buy like a duplex, you live on one side, you rent the other side. So that house, the upstairs is a separate unit. So I bought that house for 140,000 and um, I lived in the bottom and I rented the top. And so I bought the first house for 40,000. Bought this second house for 140000 And I still, and again, by the way, this is at a time where I had that $5 million contract. So I'm bringing in $30,000, $40,000, dollars a month after I paid everybody. And I'm still living in uh, a house that costs less than $200,000. I'm making twenty to fifty k a month after expenses, like after I paid all my contractors, I'm putting in my bank and I'm living in a house that's less than two hundred thousand dollars. I just don't know how many of you guys out there would do that. I, I really don't. I just don't know how many of you guys listen to this would do that kind of stuff. You know, I, I don't know how many would make those same decisions and then wonder like why five years later or how five years later I'm in this position. You know, most people, they'd be like, well, why the hell are we living in this town but a house that costs, my, my mortgage was like 800 bucks a month. By the way, I did a 20 year mortgage. It was like 800 bucks a month. <laughs> now, fairness, the house was a disaster. So I had to, I ended up putting about forty thousand into it, and the first house was also a disaster when I bought it. So I paid forty-two thousand. I think I invested fourteen to sixteen k in the house to get it up to like livable standard. The first one, so I ended up all in. I I think I was close to sixty grand all in in the first house. 
The second house was 142,000, but the lady who lived there was like 98 years old. Like she lived there her whole life. And so I literally had to gut the entire bottom floor. But the top floor was sufficient to live in because it had been renovated. And so I was able, I rented the house on, up top before I moved into the bottom. So I still stayed in my little house that was 40 grand while renovating the bottom of my other house. And then I literally, um, so I did that. So I, I, so I was able to live in there my little house. So now, and then I rent at the top. So I got rental income from the top. I'm renovating the bottom and I'm living in my $40,000 house over here. But it gave me the ability to do this, to be in a position now to where you will not be surprised if I'm meeting with Snoop Dogg's partner of Death Row Records, how far is a stretch for me to meet Snoop Dogg? Like how, 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 how big of a stretch is that? My goal, and I'm gonna I'm I'm claim it right now today, publicly, okay? My goal, okay? If I'm meeting with, if he's friends with Dr. Dre, and Snoop Dogg, he started different records. He put these guys in business. How far is it a stretch for me to meet them? We're already one degree of separation. We're one degree of separation. Maria, how are we doing on likes? Kyle, how are we doing on likes? So, how how far of a stretch is it for me to meet Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg? Now. What if I were to help Harry O get into government contracts? And what if I show him the game for free? I got time. What if I say, hey, look, Harry O, you from Death Row Records. Let me do you a favor. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going uh, to show you how to do a contract, right? And I'm going to let you make some money. It ain't got to be big money. Maybe I let him make 10000 50000 15000 20000 Just so you can see it, get a taste for it. You don't think he's going to tell anybody? They're going to tell somebody? I said, now, if we could do this at this level, 15000 20000 what can we do? We put some money behind it. 50000 100000 $200,000. So what I'm saying to you is, right, the $40,000 house, leaving, the, leaving my, my downtown 2500 whatever it was, I don't remember, what, 2200 $2,500 a month apartment. Move into a $40,000 house while I was making 40, 20 to 40000 50000 a month. Then move into a $140,000 house to a town of 5,000 people, predominantly people that didn't look like us, that didn't like people that looked like us. To then now move into a town with 18 billionaires. To now going to parties in my building with people who are professional tennis players, whose friends own Lamborghinis, the second largest owner of Lamborghinis, right? To now manifesting that I want to be in the entertainment industry. And more importantly, the really what I want to do is I want to go to one of uh, Michael Rubenstein's parties. Anybody seen Michael Rubenstein's parties? Yo, that's, I want y'all, y'all heard it here first. I want to go to one of his all white parties. If you haven't seen it, yo, look it up. I'm going to pull it up to you right now. It's great. Like his, everybody and their mama is at his party. Michael Rubin's party is, hold on. His net worth is about 11 billion. But his parties, Jay Z's there. Everybody's there. This is his party. Ben Affleck's there. That's right, baby, in the Hampton. That's where I want to be. As I'm telling you right now, it's no secret. The secret's out the bag. The count is at the bag. This is my goal. I want to be here with Tom Brady, Ben Affleck, and J-Lo at Michael Rubin's parties. I want to be here with Kevin Hart. Oh! Okay? This is where, this is where I'm headed. That's where I'm headed. 
See, Maria, that's why I got to get one of these watches. This is where I'm headed. All right? I'm telling y'all now. I'm Y'all, listen. I'm telling you. Look. Jay-Z, Beyonce, Kim Kardashian. All right? I'm, this is, hey, I'm going to one of these parties. I'm telling y'all right now. I'm telling, look, you heard it here. All right, let me keep going. Hold on, wait, wait, I got some more good stuff. I got some more good stuff. I ain't even finished yet. So we talk about manifesting. So hold on, wait, wait, wait. So where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Hold on. Dang it. I can't find it. Hold on one second. Hey. Oh, Tracy. Oh, you know my shoe game going to be right. Come on, Tracy. You know my shoe game going to be right. So check this out. Same event. Remember, remember, think and grow rich. We start off this conversation with think and grow rich. Some of us are hard working folks. But think and grow rich. Hold on. So remember, I, I, a week ago, I told my son I wanted to start getting an entertainment game. Man, I'm dropping so much stuff for y'all. Listen, y'all, y'all don't even know. Let, let me, before I do that, let's finish up. Let's finish up the lessons. Let me finish up real quick. Because y'all, so we already know about, hey, reading books, sacrificing your present, response for your own faith, set financial goals. We already, we already talked about that stuff, right? Focusing on your health. That's fine. Listen, Kenny. You don't have, it's, listen, this is the thing that y'all don't realize. You don't have to choose Oprah or Jay-Z. You can do both, right? Spend time with successful people. This is what I keep telling y'all. That's the only people that I hang out with. Spend time with successful people. You guys got to go to some of these rooms. You got to get in there. So now, and we're going to close up. We're going to close with this. We're going to close with this because I because it's 9 o'clock. We've been here two hours, right? I know it's, it's Sunday, so y'all good. Thanksgiving week. I hope everybody get fat, eat a bunch of turkey. But make sure you get that exercise in. Make sure you go to that gym. All right. Oh no, we turn it up, Biggie. Listen, I'm. I, I, look, I love y'all. Y'all my people. But if y'all don't want to do right, I gotta go with some folks that want to do right. It's people out here with some money that want to come out here and do this in a major way. I'm trying to bring y'all to the table. I'm trying to invite y'all to the dance, but y'all got to do your part. Like you got to, you you got to do your part, right? Now you see, I got Zach came in, Tracy Bird. We know Tracy. I can count on her. You know what I'm saying? I know Alan, Maria, Yvette. You know what I'm saying? Like I got my people. So I need some of y'all other Gita. I keep saying your name, Colin. Like you know, I got my people. But check this out. So. Again, hanging around successful people, manifesting, right? Think and grow rich. I'm manifesting. I want to be in the entertainment space. So Maria already said, see, when people know your goals, that means that just like I tell my goals. I'm not hiding my goals. How why how do y'all expect to manifest your goals if you're hiding them? If you're not telling everybody, I'm not ashamed. Yes, one of my goals is to have dinner with Jay-Z and Oprah. And and so actually it's funny because I don't really care about having dinner with Beyonce. I just really Jay-Z I want to meet. I ain't really got nothing to say to Queen B, but you know, I mean, if she comes, that's cool. But check this out. No, no disrespect to the Queen because she's still the Queen. But my goal is Jay Z because a lot of things that he did and overcame, I overcame. And this next gentleman I'm about to share with you that you're gonna hear from him really soon. Um, anybody heard of a little company? Um, it's a little company called Heartbeat. Anybody heard of Heartbeat before? Anybody? Heartbeat? Anybody know who Heartbeat is? Mm -mm -mm. I'll wait. Nope. Karen said, with God, anything's possible. Karen, you know, I appreciate that comment. But I think a lot of us are sitting back and waiting on God and we're not doing any action. We're not doing any activity. Right. And this is a lot of time, especially in our communities, we sit back and we pray for things without actually taking steps. So I want to encourage people to take steps, not just pray and hope. 
right? Because that's a lot of times in our communities, we tend to be so dependent upon, right? Um, what they said, faith without works. So we got to do more than just pray and expect God to come and save us. We got to actually do some activities. Um, that's right. Kevin Hart's company, correct. Um, so again, I'm manifesting, right? Manifesting. All right. So, anybody know Jeff Clanagan? There you go. Faith without deed. Let's go. Faith without works. That's right. Hey, listen, y'all, y'all must don't believe me. Let me get. Wait a second. Y'all don't know I got a praying mama. I don't know if y'all, y'all know I grew up in the church, right? If y'all go back to my old videos, we talk about principles from the Bible. So. If you go back to some of my old content, Maria loves that kind of content. Go back to my content where we talk about, right, these concepts. So you ain't, listen, y'all ain't going to get me with none of that stuff. I understand, hey, I understand principles. I grew up, I played piano in church. I played the organ in church. My mom's uh, been a Christian since she was 13 years old. She's been volunteering in the church doing the books for 50 years. Okay, so uh, I just want to share that with people just in case, uh, just give some insight in case they didn't know that part about me. Um, so again, same event. This is the morning session. Jeff Klan again um, is the um, president of Heartbeat, which is Kevin Hart's production company. All right. So um, Jeff was at the event also. All right. So Jeff was there, and um, so. I basically, that's right, baby. My mom was a prayer warrior to God bless her. People are praying for us and we might not even know it. I know my mom is praying for me and she's praying for y'all too. I promise you that. So if anybody need a prayer, my mom will beat me tomorrow morning and I'll tell her to say a prayer for y'all. And matter of fact, in the beginning when I first did YouTube, I would write down all of my subscribers' names in a book to pray for them when I first did it. YouTube. Just some little information here. Um, so we've been praying for you a long time. But either way, so Jeff is the president of Heartbeat, which is Kevin Hart's production company, which does all Kevin Hart stuff. Um, and guess what? All right, Tia said, pray for her. I got you, Tia. Uh, and guess what? When Jeff shared his story about helping Master P with No Limit, uh, when Master P had his, music, uh, his um, movie company they could not get distribution rights. Jeff helped him solve that problem. He did Cat Williams first special. He did um, a couple other people. He did their, he, uh, all artists and entertainers. He helped them get distribution rights because black people could not get distribution rights from these companies. And then he eventually came on to work with Kevin Hart and Heartbeat. So when Jeff finished the stage, you know, I went up there, I talked to Jeff, and I was like, hey, Jeff, man, love your story, man, really inspiring. I said, um, I'd love to have you a guest on my podcast um, because I want you to come on to my podcast and talk about mindset to my audience. Jeff says, no problem. Send me an email. So when we get Jeff, who's the president of Heartbeat, on the GovCon Giants podcast. Hey, we talking some good stuff tonight, ain't we? And we talking some good stuff tonight. So when we get Jeff on our podcast, who's president of Heartbeat, who's tied to Kevin Hart, and I get to go with my man, Harry O, who's tied to Snoop and Dre. Y'all see how this is coming together? Can y'all see how the, the dots are connected? And then when people say, hey, oh, I'm sorry to hear that about your sister. When, when these things happen and people say, oh, Eric, you're so lucky, Eric. You're always in the right place at the right time. Oh, Eric, man, how did you pull that off? Oh, Eric, you know, no. I am not lucky. Yes, I mean, there is an element of luck to it. 
But again, we're also being intentional. I was tired. I caught a red eye flight from San Diego. Most people would say, look, I'm going to sleep in for a day and rest. I said, I can't rest because my people need me. I can't rest. I've seen my mom give her last dollar to people. So for me to spend my time and energy to do something that I believe in, that I've been advocating for and fighting for for six years, is the least I can do. That's the least I can do for people. Is to wake up and, you know what, catch a sleep on a plane, you know, and then get to the hotel and then change and get out there and get it. So I want to share that with you because going back to these things here, right? Um, use your time wisely, use your health wisely, right? Setting financial goals, believing in your own faith, sacrificing for the future, um, reading books, right? If you set your mind and you your fully concentrated effort into one thing, right? Into one thing. If you truly say, I'm going to, like you said, A, somebody said they got to get a contract in 2024. If you make that decision, it will happen for you. If you decide, like, you want to go into an industry or space, you know, it, it's, it, it's going to happen. It's, there's no doubt in my mind that this will happen for you. If you make the conscious decision, conscious decision to cut back on spending in one area so you can invest over here so that you can then get all the things that you ever wished for. We got to pull back, folks. You got to pull back on some other stuff, right? It's They always say, what are you willing to sacrifice or give up for your goals? And most of you are not willing to sacrifice anything. You just want to hit your goals without making any type of commitment or sacrifice or giving anything on your side. You just wanted it to happen for you, happenstance. So you got to give up something to get something. So, you, so do me a favor. If you're going to tell me, right, hey, Eric, I'm going to get a contract. Tell me also, what are you willing to give up to get that contract? I put on a screen today all the stuff that I gave up, all the stuff that I sacrificed. I moved to a racist town, a redneck town, a, 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 a you know a Trump 2024 flags flying town, which I'm okay with, but it's just being irritable with the loud horns, with the big trucks that would smoke and blow the smoke out in your, in your face with the, with the pipe thing coming out. I left a nice comfort luxury building with where I had vegan food. By the way, I was a vegetarian at that time. I had no vegetarian options in this little town with two liquor licenses and two bars. And when I made videos every day, I didn't have people praising me on the back, telling me how great I was, you know, cheering me on. I went against the grain. My mom wanted me to stay working at Miami Dade County making 80,000 a year. I chose to walk away from that. So when, before you tell me that you're going to get this contract, or you're going to do this. Tell me what you're willing to give up, because you got to you got to sign you got to co-sign on that too. So you can't sign on one without signing on the other. I've already I just showed you what I gave up, and I'm and I just I'm still giving up stuff. I'm still sacrificing, right? I just told you right now. I went from event to event to event to event to event, and then I flew a flight so I could go to dinner with these people, so then I could be at the other event for the next morning. And guess what? You know what's funny? I love Jim Rome said this. Jim Rome says once people, once you get turned on, it's hard to turn a person off. And you don't want people saying, hey, look at Tia West out here. Tia, you should just take a break. Tia, girl, you work so hard. Just sit down and relax. That's what you want people saying about you. That's what people say about me. When I called my mom yesterday, talked on the phone, she said, what are you doing tomorrow, Sunday? She said, are you going to rest? I said, yeah, I'm going to rest a little bit. I said, I got to do some work. She says, listen, just take the day off. This is that's what you want people to say. Hey, take the day off, rest, relax, because they know you're going so hard that, that they already like they already know. Like my sister said, hey, I don't call him unless he calls me. I know he's busy. My mom said, look, the last time I went to my mom's house, she said, what are you doing here? You got other places to be. This is my mama told me. What am I doing in her house? She said, you got somewhere to be at. You don't need to be at my house. I'm fine. 
So this is this is how people view me and my own family, right? This is how people look at me. Do people look at you that way? Do people or do people look at you like, oh, she ain't doing nothing. She ain't up to nothing. You want people to respect your time and say, nah, Lakeisha, girl, you can't even keep with Lakeisha. I don't even know. Lakeisha been down in the books. She been grinding. She doesn't talk about government contract thing. I don't know what she's doing right now. Make them say that about you. Make them talk about you. Don't be right here talking about whatever that stupid song is. I don't even know the name of that song, but that song that's poisoning all of our kids' minds with that girl with the crazy hair and they're talking about a bunch of sex stuff. And like, don't have that stuff in your mind. Don't have, like, if I hear that, if I see any person play that song, I know that that's not the kind of person I want to be associated with. I know it. And you know what song I'm talking about? The one where the little kids are singing it. Pinky Red or something red. I don't even know the name of the song. But I saw a, a TikTok video where this kindergarten teacher said her kids were coming to school singing that ghetto song. And if you know that song and you're around people that listen to that song, I'm telling you, you're not around the kind of people that that I'm around. I'm telling you now, you're not, you're not on boats. You're not going to private events. You're not staying at exclusive hotels. You're not going to exclusive dinners. You ain't doing that. I'm just telling you now. I already know you're not because all of my friends, despite how wealthy they are, you know what they talk about? Hey, man, you know what Travis connected with me on? And he said this on the podcast. Go back and listen to the main Travis interview. We connected because he could text me at six in the morning. I challenge any one of you. I tell people all the time, Yvette knows this. I talk to Yvette in the early in the morning. I talk to Sylvia early in the morning. I talk to Maria early in the morning. If you really want to talk to me, I'll take I'll take a call at 6 a.m. I'll take a 7 a.m. call. I'll take a 6.30 call. I'm not walking my five miles anyway, so it ain't no big deal. I'm not walking, just running my mouth to the people in the street. So I have no problem taking 5 a.m., 6 a.m. calls. But you're not up. But my other successful friends are. They text me at that time. We talk. Y'all afraid to pick up the phone to call people, talk on the phone with people. Come on. For crying out loud. And then you blaming everybody else. You blaming everybody else for your situation. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Take all that crying stuff someplace else. Take all that stuff someplace else. I don't want to hear it. I'm not looking for it. I'm not giving no sympathy. I'm not doing it. So y'all go someplace else with that. I'm looking for, again, people that you're not following instructions, <laughs> and then you're blaming me for not getting the results. You're blaming other people. I'm I've come to the conclusion, right? One thing that I learned in the last two weeks, right? And Yvette, you learned this with me. Okay, um, we have a student of ours that is, he was on our podcast. He's helping us with the sales month. By the way, this is our sales month. I didn't even talk about the sales month, but this is our sales month where we are selling our program. All right, we'll open up for the next cohort, right? Um, I'll drop it in here. All right, so if you're interested in taking our program, being part of the cohort. But one of the guys who's helping us, one of the coaches that's helping us with, with taking all the incoming calls, schedule calls, and you get on the phone with one of our coaches, all right? So one of the guys who's actually, we had so many people that signed up to schedule calls to talk about enjoying the next cohort, which is this month, and run through December 14th, by the way. Um, we had to bring on more salespeople to take all the calls for people who wanted to join us. And this time, we're doing a better job of screening people who are serious about doing this. So this is not even just about money. It better tell you. We want people that are serious and committed that can bring something to the table. I don't want your money if you're going to quit. I don't want your money if you're not going to do the videos and watch that. I'm telling you right now, I don't even want your money. Keep it. Go someplace else to somebody who just wants to take your money. We want people who are serious who are going to commit to doing the activities. So we're gonna get a, when you get on the phone to coach, they're going to tell you all this stuff. 
So check this out. So one of the guys, um, and a veteran I'm talking about, Brian came to us and he bought every GovCon person's course. Everyone, all the people that you see, he bought every single course and he went through every single course and he said that no one even comes close to what we offer. Now, I didn't know this because I don't have any frame of reference because I've never bought another person's course. He said they all have courses, which is like, you know, a couple modules. We have an actual academy. We have a program that takes months to go through. And if you listen to our students' success stories, most of them said they took spent three months inside of our trainings to start to really connect the dots. Three months. That's the commitment. But you can't commit three months to change your life. I'm, I'm sorry for you. You're back in, you're back in, you might as well be in solitary confinement. You know, three months. Three months. So uh, I do want to, you know, again, we are uh, open up this month, right? So if you want to head over here, uh, meet with one of the coaches. They'll talk to you about the different programs that we have. Uh, I did want to, like I said, I want to talk more about the mindset because really after seeing, I never met people who have been so much, so much time in prison, um, but after seeing that these people come out and what they were able to accomplish, and knowing my story, and knowing my friends' stories, and knowing my all my guys from the boat crew stories, and just witnessing that, it's really hard for me to side with you guys who have a whole bunch of excuses, of, you know, basically got a bag of them. And so I really want and hope and pray that um, you put that stuff to the side and you say, I don't need to see 10 more success stories. I don't need to make 10 more millionaires. I don't need to watch, you know, another Tyler Rose come up in his community and win five more contracts. I don't need to watch another Robert Swain, you know, do $5 million. I don't need to watch another Ebro. I, you know, I don't like, I hope that you make that decision, that commitment to yourself and say, I don't need to, to see that, to witness that, to watch it and sit to the sideline. Do you know that? And again, Tracy Bird, when you bought my course, how much did you pay? It's funny because some people say, oh, Eric, I should have bought it last year or the year before that. When we came out, it was $97 and then $197 and then $497 and then $997. And you didn't buy then. Some of you have been watching me for four or five years and you still haven't invested in yourself. And you're still wondering what's wrong and why, I'm not, why am I in the same situation? Why is my life not transformed? Still. Listen, I love you guys. I got to get out of here. Uh, look, look at Tracy said. Tracy paid $97. That's what I was for. All right. Listen, be intentional, right? Don't go play. It's, if you're in a place or an environment where people are getting high, <laughs> get out of there. If you're in a place or environment where people are gossiping about other people, get out of there. If you're in a place and environment where people know more about the next the videos, right? They talking about um, uh, Pinky Red, you know, uh, Drake Baby Mama. Get get run, run as fast as you can. Tell the people you gotta go. I'm sorry, your mama's sick, your cousin's sick. Get, you gotta get you gotta get the hell out of there. You gotta run from those places. When people are talking about this kind of stuff, please run as fast as you can because they're poisoning your mind. They are You only have so much capacity to take in good and bad and evil. Get out of those places. Get out of those environments. We don't have, we don't have enough space in our brain to take all that stuff in and then combat it. Right? We don't have that. I don't have that much room in my space. When people say crazy stuff like that, I, I'm telling you. I turn it off. I tell you, I, get, I can't hear that. I tell you, I cannot listen to that. I run. I run. You know. So, like you said, see what Tracy talked about? See, everybody talked P. Diddy. But you know what? When I see that stuff, I, don't, I run from that too. I don't want to hear it. I, listen, I ain't got nothing to do with P. Diddy. Just like I had nothing to do with Bill Cosby. 
Well, I ain't got to do a Harvey Weinstein. So what, 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 what dog do I have in the fight? I ain't got no dog in the fight. P. Diddy rich. You know, I ain't got no dog in that fight. So I'm look, they're not making political decisions for me. They're not in my district. They're not running for mayor. You know what I'm saying? They don't have no power over any of the things that affect my everyday life. So I'm out of here. Hey, y'all be good. I love y'all. Uh, prayers to everybody out there. I'm sorry for your loss of your sister. Um, I hope that this message resonates with some folks out here. Look forward to seeing everybody over in the Federal Help Center. Uh, if you missed it, um, federalhelpcenter.com. Go back and watch the video. If you want to sign up to meet with one of the coaches, talk about the programs that we've got going over right now. Where is it at? It's at, uh, there you go. Um, right here on the link, govpinder.com slash join. We'll take you there. Love you guys. Have a great night.